And that's why we live in an economic system which is theirs, the psychopathic system, and therefore the, the system that's coming in, they don't need all those workers to service the world and make and produce things. Therefore, they want to eliminate what they call the useless eaters, as Lord Bertrand Russell called them. Going back a little bit to the Bible again, um, uh, this is reminds me when you when you're talking about the the, the breeding and the and the ju- ju- uh, eugenics of it all that um, that this is has to do actually with with the with the bloodlines or the, even the line of of uh, uh, I don't know if I should, should say Cain because that's that's probably a, the wrong idea here but uh, I tie this together with the idea of the, the the punishment after you know again the the tree in the Garden of Eden and all this that. Uh, the death actually was was something that was put on man, or or a sin that was put on man because of the uh, the thing that happened in the garden with the, with the fruit uh, tree, tree of knowledge and all of this. Um, do you think that there could be some kind of a more esoteric overall overarching theme here to uh, l- actually tying this together with with life extension te- technologies and living forever and uh, the punishment of death basically? Uh, well, the Old Testament, remember, is all allegory of the rules that this system works by. That has nothing to do with real people. And Cain and Abel, one represents the, the nomadic type that follows his herd, that's Abel. He was able to do it, you know. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you find that Cain could, <laughs> but he was he was static. And the beginning of what they call civilization is the end of the nomadic life and the beginning of agriculture. That's what it means when you get people static together. Now they have homes. Now you can own the homes. Now you can own the farms. You can own the land. Mm -hmm. And and so it was a a system coming in under the idea that they they gave it a name of Cain. Cain means king. Cain means ruler, actually. They used to use that in a school. Your ruler was made out of Cain, by the way, you know. (laughs) <laughs> bamboo, <clears throat> and um, so you have the, the the measuring of everything, the measuring, the weighing of everything through Cain. <clears throat> From Cain came King, and Kingu is what the the, the, the ancient Mesopotamians called their King, Kingu, and Kingu, uh, all these different variations of Cain. But Cain and Abel, Cain shows that he who had the will to kill off uh, competition. Hmm. Uh, would would become top. He become the top man, oh. and uh, that's what it really means. And you eat your enemy. In ancient times, you used to eat your enemy symbolically, and you took the power of that enemy into you. That was cannibalism. Cannibal. 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 Ah, there we go. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> I haven't even thought about that. I, I was thinking about things like. Uh, cocaine and sugar cane, you know, uh, the drug, the, the drugs and all of that stuff, you know. That's right, that's right, and that's why you get high. You measure the height. You get high on drugs, hmm. and it's all related to the old mystery builders, the big builders of society. And see, it's not real people in the Bible. It's an allegory of the system. Mm-hmm. And and it's an allegory that they are. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, that they're following, I guess, and that they're trying actually to implement on, on on our level, or at least if there is mythologies in there, like the book of Revelation and all this, this might be something that they're actually are trying to uh, create here or striving for in in one sense. There's no doubt. There's, there's no doubt. That in Genesis or the gene of Isis, you have... You have a beginning, and it starts with gene, the word gene, remember? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and we remember that, never forget the word gene. And and it tells you in there that there's a deity, right? A deity who creates first man and woman in chapter one. In the perfect sameness, the magio, the perfect, perfect sameness as the God, meaning they were gods themselves. Hmm. And... In chapter 2, it tells you there was no one to till the soil. Now, the first one was called man and woman, and the perfect sameness. Chapter 2, you have, there's no one to till the soil, so so Adam, meaning earth, ruddy, red, red, and Eve were created. And what it means is an allegory of a superior type that's ruled the world, who, have, who are like gods to themselves, as far as they're concerned, but they don't do the work. Adam and Eve, every, the commoners do the work. Mm-hmm. So, there's, so the, the Bible starts off with a class or caste system built right into it for those who understand it. 
Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are so ma- so many connections here again, going back to the ba- the Bible, and we've talked about this before. I guess that that. And it also tells you, uh, it, it told Adam and Eve to go out and replenish the earth, meaning it had been plenished or populated before this God came along. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's that all about? And even when uh, Cain got his mark um, yeah. by God because he had slain Abel. Uh, he was afraid to go out in the land because he was afraid that he would be lynched, basically, because of what he had done. So, again, suggesting that there are more people out there, you know, the beasts out there. Or, exactly. exactly. And, and that that might be even a, a kind of a reference to the, uh, how should we put it, the, 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 the people or the humans that were around, well, was around at that time, but uh, weren't, uh, considered to be within this class that you talked about of Adam and Eve, the the rulers, basically. That's right, and and, uh, and so technically, you see, most folk are not men or women; uh, they're, they're descended from from another species, as far as elite are concerned, um, a lesser type of of, of being, uh, a human, as they call it, and uh, even the word humor. Uh, from the earth again comes from it, right, red, ruddy, earth, earthy. Hmm. Uh, I, I thought that Hugh man stu- stood for uh, for humble man. Do you know if that's true? <laughs> <laughs> well, we certainly. I'd say the hum part is true. We're good worker bees. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're we're. Uh, it's really from the earth, from the humus. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's an interesting thing. Um, Hey, listen, I just wanted to return a, a little bit and talk about the uh, the ECFR again. Uh, just mention a few of the members that are that are in there. Most of these guys I haven't heard about. This is, of course, the the, the regular, I guess, politicians from around Europe. Uh, the former Finnish president, Ma- Marti Ahtisari, and the uh, uh, current special UN Envoy for Kosovo, uh, one guy called Joschka Fischer, is the former German Foreign uh, Affairs Minister. Well, I might get that wrong, I'm not sure. And um, former EU Counterterrorism Coordinator Timothy Garton Ash, uh, and one guy from 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 Poland, for, Foreign Minister. But one interesting guy that they had in there, I guess the representative of the bankers or whatever, was. Uh, George uh, Soros, and he's got a good spot, I guess, in there. <laughs> That's right, the front man for the Rothschilds. Yeah. Uh, so he'll be making decisions, I guess, on the e- economical plane and telling the other guys what's, what's, w- you know, what is up and what is not with the uh, ec- economical vice, I guess. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, the other thing so far ahead, and you know, this is what Margaret Thatcher referred to in her speeches when she was touring the globe after she left as Prime Minister of Britain. And, and her her lecture tours were entitled the New World Order, New World Order, and uh, and she said we all the ex premiers and and high politicians, meaning the high cabinet politicians, we uh, have formed and are part of a parallel government, hmm. uh, an unelected, previously elected but unelected parallel government. We all know each other. We all work together towards a greater cause a greater future and now this is exactly what was brought up at the beginning of the 1900s in england uh when the upper elite were complaining about this idea of democracy and that democracy with conflicting parties and bickering could never get anything done in in a hurry because of all their their arguing and therefore they had decided to set up this this, uh, royal institute for international affairs Mm -hmm. which would be a parallel government which would incorporate all the ex- prime ministers and presidents into it. That's what we have been living under. And Professor Carl Quigley, who was the historian for the CFR in America and who had access to all the records, wrote the two great books on it, The Anglo-American Establishment and Tragedy and Hope. And he said, and and this in the 1960s, he said, we have been under this form of government, this parallel government, this secret government for over 50 years. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Right from the horse's mouth, as it were. Uh, do, 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 um, uh, because I had a question about this a while back, actually, uh, someone who was, I guess, interested in these subjects and wanted to, to talk more. Do you have any good uh, like book recommendations beyond, I guess, the bi- biographies 
of the big boys themselves are, are the best source, I guess, to, to kind of get get it from the horse's mouth, as it were. But do you have any other good suggestions or, or recommendations for people who want to dive into further about this? They have to go in to the books put out in 1944, 45, 46 uh, by uh, high politicians or ex-prime ministers. Lots of them came out uh, in the Americas and in Britain at the time uh, because they all belong to this Royal Institute for International Affairs, CFR, mm-hmm. and they, they all pushed books for global integration under a world government. Uh, uh, they, they didn't get their way. They thought the public were ready to bow down after World War II. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, and they were very cocksure themselves, so they published a lot of their findings, but um, and they didn't get away with it, so they, they went <laughs> quiet again, but worked steadily towards the integration Secretly, uh, there are stacks of books out there put out. I'd have to go through my list though to get them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we can do that for a, for a future program. We can go through some of those or, or some recommendations if you have some, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> um, hey, listen. I, I just wanted to uh, squeeze this in here. I saw recently a, a lecture by. Uh, a guy that I currently don't remember his name, but he was talking about an organization called uh, Common Purpose. Have you have you heard about this? I have heard about it. Yes. Um, I don't. Uh, this was a brief lecture that I watched. I'd, I'm not that in 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 tune with everything what it's about and so forth. But this was basically, if we if I should boil it down, this was basically something that he referred to as a some kind of mind you know mani- or manipulation or even some kind of cult basically that trained uh, politicians and different people in different kinds of uh, authority positions um, oh, to actually work against of course at the, as the name implies a, a common purpose uh, but what I, I found interesting in this was that um, they they said that, they set up the organization as a charitable organization, and uh, always with do uh, a foundation. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, tell us about that because uh, he, he was referring to that that there are actually different laws that goes in if you set it up as a charitable foundation. Yes, you do. Uh, <coughs> they have uh, number one. They have um, they can funnel large amounts of money into the foundation without taxation. Uh, therefore, they're not subject to tax. They also get special exemption laws as far as disclosure of their bookkeeping, who they're giving it to, where the money comes from, or anything else. But um, if you go back into the writings of Albert Pike, for instance, he talked about, um, he said, we shall, we shall gain authority and power over uh, everyone by using every means that are disposable, by collecting money by any means possible, including manipulation of the stock market, and then we shall become masters over the masters of the world. What he was referring to was the creation of great foundations, mm-hmm. and, and that's been reiterated again by, by other characters. Uh, Adam Weishaupt said the same thing, we shall create huge foundations, which then will, will put out charitable organizations, which will be political leader op- uh, organizations in reality, and fund them heavily, and they would demand laws that would get past all in the line of our agenda, and that's what we have exactly. and under charitable institutions. Wow, ex- exactly. And and uh, he he even mentioned the guy that talked about this, the, the common purpose, that uh, there are different specifications here in, in regards to what you actually have to uh, keep track on, or or uh, I guess you know the, the the bookkeeping basically on on what is being said under the meetings. There are different laws here, meaning that they don't have to keep track on it on in the same way. And what I thought about right away was that um, hey, wait a minute, isn't Freemasonry kind of a charitable organization? This is one of the attributes that goes hand in hand with this, that. Uh, you know that they have a lot of charities to if it's you know burn victims or give money give money to hospitals or whatever it might be, but a consequence of that then might be that there are different laws that this organization can can go under. Do you think that's one of the main reasons why it's a, it's a charitable organization? Yeah, you understand that all the occult have hidden behind good works from the very beginning. Uh, when the Knights Templars. Uh, merged, they merged with the, uh, the assassins, the Hasha 